Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to week three of subscriber store reviews. This series is very straightforward. Every single week I take a look at one, sometimes two Shopify stores from people who watch me on YouTube. The reason I started this series is because the number one search term for drop shipping help is traffic, but no sales. So if you've been running a Shopify store and you've had hundreds of visits, if not thousands of visits and seen zero sales or not quite the return that you're hoping for, then this is the series for you. If you want to get your store reviewed it is very simple head over to instagram you will find a link in the video description down below and simply dm me your shopify url i will add it to the list and i will work through them chronologically top to bottom so if you want to get your store reviewed sooner rather than later make sure you head over there after this video so this week then week three i've got two stores to show you number one is a shoe slash handbag store and then the second store we'll be taking a look at is a pet dropship store okay so jumping straight into the first one we have moda online.org and their logo as we can see says moda sky what i'm going to do then before i start commenting is just having a flick through taking a look at the home page taking a look at the kind of products that they're selling the kind of price points they're selling it at so 50 dollars for those 100 dollars for those and we'll take a look at some of the bags $40 women's handbag, $36 women's shoulder handbag, patent leather handbag. And the reason I want to do this is because I want to try and get a feel for the store and try and kind of understand who it is that they're trying to target. The reason why I wanted to feature this store this week is because it falls short in the department, if that's the right way of describing it, of when I look at a lot of Shopify stores, especially drop shipping ones, people who want to try and make some money is they don't have a why. So they have nice products, products that are selling really well, that are really popular, but they don't have a why. They don't have a why would a consumer choose to buy it from you and not somebody else. And that's the first thing I'm thinking when I see this store. Why would I come onto this store and buy these generic hiking shoes for $53 that are apparently half price instead of just going to my local shoe store or ordering them from Amazon and getting them probably for cheaper and faster delivery too. Why would I buy it from this random store that's interrupted my day on Google or Facebook ads? Why would I buy it from this stranger versus Amazon, which is a household and trusted name with a great reputation? And that is what this store is lacking. Another thing I've noticed is every single product is pretty much half price. So all of those are like, say $50. All of these are say $50. To me, that looks a bit sketchy unless you're having like a closing down sale or it's Black Friday. You need to have an announcement at the top explaining why you have $50 off every single product. When we look at the names of these products, women's handbag, women's shoulder handbag, stylish, patent leather handbag, they're kind of like keyword product names, the sort of name you'd see on Amazon or the sort of name you'd see on eBay. There's no real kind of like exciting about these names. So it's not like a model of a handbag or it doesn't have a name. It's simply stating exactly what the handbag is. So again, you're kind of devaluing your brand and devaluing your product by not giving it like a exciting and sexy name. I've had a look through pretty much every product on this website and the same problems keep reoccurring. They're kind of like housekeeping issues, but it's a popular issue that I see in quite a few Shopify stores, which is um, not taking the care and attention that your product pages need to go through and make sure everything looks professional and everything makes sense. So if we have a look at the variants for an example, so black with a capital A, again, there's like I'm not going to pay $100 for a pair of shoes that's called black A that just it doesn't make sense to me. You're charging, in my mind, a premium price. Like you can buy pretty global household brand names. Like you can buy a pair of Nike or Adidas for less than $100. So why am I going to buy these generic platform leather women's white shoes that are called Black A for $100? It's just not going to happen. And that's probably why you have zero sales up to this point. The other thing as well is you have Black lowercase white A, Black lowercase white B. Then you have black, no space, capital B, white A, white B. It's just little housekeeping things like that. Everything needs to be uniform. You either need to give each color a name or you need to make sure that everything's capitalized the same way or there's spaces in uniform places throughout as well. If you're targeting a global market and trying to sell this globally, you need the conversions for what these sizes are. This needs to be crystal clear to whoever you're advertising to so they know exactly what size they're getting. The other thing as well, let's just check out support. Let's check out refunds. 30-day refunds which is fine 
you have a Gmail account there, which isn't very professional at all. Again, that kind of devalues your brand. For anyone selling returnable items, clothing, shoes, you need to have a really slick store and it needs to be crystal clear. It needs to be on your product page with a tab that says exactly what the returns policy is because that's the half the battle when people are shopping for these sorts of things online is that they won't always fit the way they like them to fit and they wanna know they can send it back hassle free and get their money back. If we take a look at this product, we can see the same issues arise. So it's not a uniform layout. So this one's not capitalized neither is this one. The imagery is changing to suit the very which is a good sign and then as we move down into the product description there's too much text there for my liking um, you want to make it as fast as possible for somebody to make a purchase the key information about product needs to be bulletized or have an icon so they can consume that information as quickly as possible if you ask somebody to spend two or three minutes to read through one two three four paragraphs it's probably not going to happen at least from my experience my consumers on average will spend maybe a minute and a half two minutes on my store so anything over the top of that people are probably going to lose interest if not get distracted what you have to remember is they will be viewing your sh your store um, on the biggest distraction in the world they could get a whatsapp message a phone call an instagram message a snapchat there's just a whole multitude of things that could distract them from potentially making a purchase and every single extra second they are on your store is an extra second they will get distracted and leave without making a purchase just to take a quick look then a couple of the kind of like fundamental or what are kind of like the skeleton of the site so one of those being support and contact information they have a different email to what we saw in their refund policy and it's info at tarajt.com i don't see any relevance there um, towards the rest of the store or the brand so this needs to be support at or help at info at hello at followed by your domain name one last thing then before we move on to the next store is we'll check out the track your product so i really like so it's taken us to i was about to say i really like having a track your order page on your store but this is not what you want you do not want people to leave your website because then you can no longer track them and for them to get back to your website there's no link on here so they'll have to click the back button which is not ideal plus this is off-putting as well people coming onto here it's not a familiar tracking website they will have seen before and if people don't feel comfortable and familiar using your website then ultimately they're not going to feel comfortable enough to make a purchase either so with that being said there's some fun fundamental flaws if I'm honest in this website um, I wouldn't touch marketing until you've spent a lot of time kind of fine doing fine tuning taking a care of those kind of household um, tasks that I've mentioned and for this person here I can tell your experience and your knowledge is obviously quite new when it comes to Shopify and building websites which is totally fine and at this point I would either recommend watching more videos on YouTube specifically product page um, building tutorials or Shopify still building tutorials. I'd also learn and read about kind of like psychology of why people buy things. So you can implement more strategies into your website, into your product pages to get people to convert. Or if you have the budget to do so, um, then invest in, in a proven course, a tried and tested and trustworthy course. Moving on to store number two, we have a pet store. It's called mypawsomepets.com. So I really like the name. I mean, you'll notice I'm reviewing this one on a mobile format. And that is because in fact, if I show you the desktop layout and get rid of this, um, then we can see it's got this a really annoying sticky header and it's all just a bit glitchy for my liking so I'm assuming that this is a theme which is optimized for mobile only so to do that I'm gonna go view developer inspect elements um, and then this little icon up here allows you to view pretty much any website in a mobile format and as you can see it still has that sticky let's get rid of this still has that sticky header which is um, irrelevant like there's no need to have that on your store to be honest it doesn't bring anything to the store it's certainly not going to help convert people so that'd be the first thing i'd do on this site and actually remove that sticky header it wouldn't actually be that bad if your logo wasn't so big or so deep um, if you made or perhaps put that my to this side here you could make the header at the top a lot thinner and then perhaps you could have a sticky one but even then there's no need to do it next thing i've noticed as well on this is the the image sizes well this first one isn't the same size as the others again it's just one of those little things that bugs me um, I'm very much of the opinion that if you're serious about business then all these finer details need to be on point and they need to be professional as a brand new business interrupting somebody's day on social media trying to sell them a product unless you kind of dot all the I's and cross all the T's then it will put the customer off it really doesn't take a lot to put customers off I'm also not a fan of having all these trust badges at the top either it's not like a tip 
typical or textbook way of doing things and at this point people aren't bothered about easy returns they're not bothered about worldwide shipping or any kind of those sorts of things they want to know about the product they want to know about the price of the product they need to be happy that they want to buy the product before you start mentioning things about easy returns and that sort of thing moving down then they have i mean that's so small can't even see what that is i think it just says free so it says plus free gift but what is that gift like i don't care about free gift unless it's something i actually want and i find a value so make sure you put what that free gift is so put free anti-spill dog bowl or free indestructible chew toy with every purchase. Make sure you be as specific as possible. My Porcelain Pets TM, which is fine, um, house style beds. So it's not a very exciting name. You could call it like a cozy cottage or a gingerbread house or have fun with it basically you're in a niche which is super fun it's super cutesy um, it's like a joyful niche so don't call it something bland like house style beds call it a cozy cottage color and size which is totally fine um, it's an American URL.com so I'm assuming it's an American audience so that spelling of colors fine um, I'm not keen on these variants I'm nitpicking here what I much prefer to have so with this gray is have that as what your variant button looks like. Looks super professional in my opinion, certainly my choice. Um, small, medium, large. So what does small, medium and large mean? So to be fair, they have it in their product description. However, if it was me, have all the information here, have all the questions answered that a consumer might have as soon as possible. The more searching around the website they have to do, the longer it's gonna take, the more fed up they're gonna get, and ultimately the more people are gonna leave without buying anything. They have an add to cart button, which if you've noticed is bouncing around the page, which is fine. You can split test that, see if it works for you. Um, buy more, save more. I do like these, however, there's no easy way so again, you have to read through all of this. We are thrilled to offer our customers a mix and match discount on our product page for both cat and dog items on board already. Can't be with that. I'd much rather see two or three more add to cart buttons. One that says buy two for 20% off, buy three for 30% off, rather than have to read through all of that text. It's just about making things a bit more user friendly. So flexible payment options, buy later with PayPal and three, or lay by with no interest free charges. So again, I'd much rather see a dynamic checkout button that says that rather than having to read through all of that and then get through all of the checkout process to then select it, if that makes sense. Shipping, again, I don't think it needs to be that wordy. If you check out stores like Twinkling Tree or Perfect House, they basically say all of this, but they do it in an easy to read and easy to digest icon. Again, if a customer is gonna read through all of this information, like depending on how fast a reader you are, like that could be a good solid like five minutes of reading, which just is, is probably not gonna happen to be honest. They have some contact information, they actually have a phone number and a proper email address as well. I'm not gonna show that um, for obvious reasons, but the contact us information is actually spot on. Again, all of the information to be fair, is spot on on this website, it's just too wordy. It just needs condensing in easier to digest way. And the same you could argue could be said for the description as well. So again, just more and more text. This could definitely be broken up with imagery of the product or gifts of the product. The other thing they don't have, so they do have one there, but it's the very last image, so probably no Nobody sees that is there's not many images of dogs actually using the bed people want to know that their dog is going to like the product and the best way to demonstrate that rather than say your dog will love this is showing a variety and range of different breeds in the bed being cute and ultimately just enjoying the product moving down the product page then just to have a quick look so four reviews got Lucille Lesh lovely little house great quality Celine Curlin as on photo Willa Bashirian, love it, Staffy loves it, Amanda Stevens, perfect, perfect, perfect. So they're not too bad. So the reason why I'm reading through these is the point I wanted to make is I see it time and time again, people will import reviews from AliExpress and they won't proofread them. So you'll have like TXXX because the name will be blanked out, L from Korea. And then, well, the one that I featured last week, the review just said, I'm pretty. And it's reviews like that, which will be more damaging than they will be good. And they'll actually put people off rather than help convince them into making a purchase. So just make sure you proofread all of your reviews. And if you can, only import the reviews from your local country, but unless you've got enough to do that, then you may have to end up proofreading, getting rid of the ones that have broken English and don't necessarily make sense. Let's wrap this store up then, just to take a look at some final touches. If we have a look at the menu bar, um, there's no like contact us here or no shipping information or no kind of like returns policy. 
they do have that on the product pages to be fair so i'm only nitpicking at this point i typically do have them in the header menu as well just so they're a bit easier to find but the fact they have it on their product page is a good enough alternative and like i've mentioned before they've got all the information that you want i think it just needs to be displayed in a slightly more easier digestible way and so to summarize they've got a pretty decent brand going on here they've got some decent products on their store they just need to fine tune their product pages a bit more learn again a little bit more about the psychology of why people would choose to buy something give people a why they would buy it from these guys just be a bit more specific with their offer and then i'm certain that with the right marketing strategy um, especially this product that they can make it work and so with that being said the guys that brings a wrap to week three of the subscriber store reviews um hopefully you've enjoyed the video hope you stuck with me hopefully there's some things on these stores that you're doing on yours which um, will help you kind of make those adjustments as well and ultimately help you guys be more successful that was the whole point um, of doing this series of actually creating this youtube channel so thanks for sticking with me hope you guys enjoyed it any comments, questions, video suggestions, um, any of that sort of stuff, just post it down below. I will see it and I will respond to you. If you want to get your store reviewed, don't forget to head over to Instagram and send me a message now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.